everyone, welcome back to Lifestyle Love. As you guys know, I am very passionate about people saving money, not wasting money, you know, taking care of themselves financially. And we have put together a series all about food efficiency so that you don't waste money on food, you get the maximum use out of your food and you feel good, you feel happy and healthy. So this video that we've made for you is about food that is worth investing in. Food that's worth you know spending a little bit more to get a much more higher quality product that's got more nutritional value and is just going to be better for you so the first one we're going to start with is fruit and vegetables yeah okay definitely really important a lot of people come to me i look at their food diary and they say lilo i'm really sick um I'm, and or i'm not losing weight or what's the problem and i say well you basically don't have a balanced diet so the cost of not having a balanced diet is a really big one so I would say the thing that everyone needs to do, and I even have vegetarians who come and see me and they have this problem, they're simply not eating enough fruit and vegetables. Mm. So we can easily fall into the trap, like you said, oh, I'm just going to eat two minute noodles or I'm just going to have toast or a sandwich because it's cheap and time effective. Mm. But we're never going to get the nutrition that we need. So make sure that when you shop and you do your meal plan that you're including a wide variety of fruit and vegetables. And I don't mean I'm just gonna eat broccoli every day, I'm gonna eat a wide variety mm. of food because it's really important we have different nutrients in different food as well, mm. and they all work chemically together, so mm. we need to eat a wide variety of food. And even if you can only afford frozen vegetables, that is fine, that is great. You know, and yeah. sometimes you know, frozen vegetables and fruit are actually more yeah. nutritious because they you know, have less time to sort of go, uh, they hold their nutritional value when they're frozen earlier in life. But um, you know, it's better to eat some vegetables rather than nothing at all. Yeah, so definitely. yeah. And we have different yeah. sort of ways you can look at. So, so if you head over to my website, I've got a few different options for you. Looking at what's in season, because obviously what's in season is cheaper. Mm. Looking at um, different, uh, like some, some people who are watching this video might be inclined to eat organic and biodynamic, and I'm really inclined to do that and invest in that. But there are certain foods that have less chemicals. So, so you don't need, so to, you don't need buy to buy organic. organic components. Okay. So that list is on my website. I'll well. make sure I um, link yeah. your list of works. I'll be having a look at this yeah. myself. Um, I'll make sure I include the, the link um, to the website in the description box. Okay, the next one is meat. Yeah, so yep. if you do eat meat, and I know not everybody does, if you do eat meat, it's a really good idea both ethically and sustainably to eat organic mm -hmm. and biodynamic meat, but that is grass-fed and grass-finished. So I'm very big on that. So I, will, I eat less meat so that I can afford to eat better quality meat, mm -hmm. and that's also better for the environment, eating less meat as well. And don't forget from our other video that we did, we talked about buying meat closer to the bone, yep. more nutritious and cheaper. So. Yeah, definitely. And buying meat from a supplier like a... A free range butcher like from a farmer's market is much cheaper than buying from a supermarket or an independent butcher um, and often they'll have things like um, buying in bulk for instance so well, I've said this before I say it so many times because when you buy things in bulk the, the distributor might give you a discount you can also look at doing things like animal shares so if you look online there'll be someone doing an animal share in your area so you can actually buy the whole animal with the My group goodness. of people mm. and then they'll divide that up equally between you and i did that once and i we bought a cow and i think it between six of us and that beef i had that beef in the freezer for a nearly a year wow there's okay. so much of it and it's so much cheaper and you can buy a biodynamic and organic the third thing we think is worth investing in is a filter. So a filter for your water, it just it extracts um, so many chemicals that are unfortunately in our everyday tap water. Absolutely. Mm. There's a lot of chemicals in water and I see a lot of people now getting conscious about that and buying bottled water, but you can spend a fortune on bottled water. Yeah. Mm. And never mind that, the plastic that we throw away with all the bottles that we use with bottled water. It's, so yeah, the damage to the There's a lot of um, options available. You can get a countertop one that just connects to your tap or you can get a really fancy one that's like mine. But I think over a period of time, like when I looked at how much I saved on not buying water mm. and also the overall health effects of taking out all those chemicals from my water it's mm. exponent it's an investment for your future basically okay the fourth one is herbs and spices so I mean the great thing about dried herbs is um, they la they don't go off so there's zero food wastage with that um, obviously fresh herbs um, do go off but you can a lot of them you can just simply freeze but they will help your meals be yeah. so much more obviously nutritious but so much more you know delicious and um, you know like it's not fulfilling but um, just 
tastier. Well, I think we're more motivated to cook when we know something's going to taste good mm. as well. And if, if we've got those packets of herb mixes there, mm. I notice people are more likely to cook their own food that as opposed to getting takeaway. And like you say, if we buy dry ones, they last longer. And as, as some of our viewers have commented on freezing the fresh herbs in olive oil and, and butter in ice cubes mm. in the fridge and that sort of thing. Such a great, so yeah, quick really and easy as well. But something to, I know when you go to the supermarket or you go to the farmer's market, the bunch of herbs are, they're expensive, mm. but I just freeze them and I'm like, I'm going to buy those because they're going to make my food taste really good. Mm. Um, the next one in number five is chocolate. Now <laughs> I had to cover this in my video on um, how to save money on snacks and you know, in buying better quality um, chocolate with at least a 70% cocoa oh, yeah. level, I guess it yeah, is yeah. called, um, so that you, when you do have a sugar craving and you have a bite of, you know, a high, you know, dark chocolate with a high cocoa content, it is much more satisfying. You don't, you know, only a few pieces, you, you know, generally satisfy. You don't end up, you know, inhaling the whole entire family yeah. size block, which is what I used to do yeah but I mean that's been such a big one for me it's really cut down how much sugar I was um, having in my diet and um, yes it might cost a little bit more the, the high quality chocolate but it, it doesn't you actually it satisfies so much quicker and you don't need to eat as much and mm -hmm. it's funny my I'll buy a you know block of dark chocolate and um, it lasts a couple of weeks cause it, whereas before when I was buying you know f large milk chocolate bars right. I, I could go through one a day. Yeah, yeah. Just, it was disgusting. But again, and I was wasting so much money. Oh, yeah, and the mm. sugar in that's very addictive. Mm. So you just want to eat more of them. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, number six is dairy. So, you know, I think you're better at explaining this than I am. But, you know, looking at, a, say, a, a consumer branded, mm. um, say, cheddar cheese, um, you know, versus, you know, a, a beautiful goat's cheese or yeah, something like yeah. that. I'll let you explain that because it's a bit more technical. I mean, there's a trick with our system is that a lot of processed food is cheaper than fresh, you know, farm produced or artisan prepared food. Now, we have to be careful of this because the more processed the food is, the less nutrient value it mm. has. So then we're putting chemicals into our body, um, you know, so it's always better to buy food that is freshly prepared. Also, like... These kind of products that are cheaper, they often don't look after the animals really well. And that's really important to me that we look after our mm. animals. So buying good quality dairy is really important. So I generally buy the fresh cheeses in the deli mm -hmm. as opposed to the packaged okay. cheeses that have so many things mixed in them like flavours and sugars. And so they need, they can use less cheese so that product's cheaper. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Gosh. And for dairy substitutes, because I know there's probably going to be a lot of people um, who are watching this that can't have dairy or are vegans mm. so that don't use dairy. When you choose a dairy substitute like a soy milk or an almond milk or make sure you read the ingredients and make sure that there's actually so for a soy milk, make sure that there's actually soy in the milk. Mm. So often you'll read the ingredients and it says this product actually has only 10% soy oil mm. and the rest of it is a whole lot of numbers and additives and all that sort of stuff. And the same with almond milk. Oh, I was shocked because Rocco um, was dairy and soy intolerant. So yeah. he, I had to have almond milk um, and he has almond milk. And I one day I looked at the container and I was horrified yeah. with the amount of stuff that goes into yeah, almond it's milk. Amazing, isn't you it? Re it really got to look at the back of the packaging and yeah, agave and the chemicals and yeah. preservatives. It was just ho I was horrified. I mean, you can make your own almond milk at home, which is obviously cheaper because almond mm. milk is actually just almonds and water. water. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if you've got a great food processor, you can do it. But if you are going to buy it, just make sure you look at the packet and go, well, how much of this is actually almonds? Yeah. Okay. All right. The next one is fish and again obviously we're aware that not everybody eats fish um, but you know buying um, mm. ocean caught fish yeah. versus the farmed fish so um, do you want to explain about the whole farming and the chemicals yes. and the water and yes yeah, so farm a lot of farmed fish because the fish is kept in very small tanks and they're in close proximity with each other they have to give them antibiotics because they don't have that natural ecosystem to protect them from all the yeah <laughs> so they give them out have to give them antibiotics they also feed them chicken quite often so they oh make goodness. pellets out of chicken so this oh. is really important for people who don't eat meat but they eat fish if you eat farm fish you actually are eating meat because those chicken but that are... can't be good for the fish because that's not a part of their natural well, diet not. so i don't know how long this can be so there was a huge article in the paper um, all about the fishing industry in australia and a lot of us fish here it's fed 
chicken pellets um so Oof. we always want to buy ocean caught fish now i spend a lot of money on my fish and i actually buy salmon from alaska because the water there is really clean there's no mercury in the water and the fish all eat you know other fish and like the like mm. living in the water eating all the from that ecosystem and i just eat slightly less fish than i would like to yeah so i think okay. that's something really important to spend because okay. i've also had a lot of people come to me who've been eating a lot of tin fish or a lot of because they eat a mainly fish diet and then they have things like mercury poisoning mm. or you know they actually have uh, other health issues that are associated with all the antibiotics and the bad food the fish eat okay yeah and then our final one of money worth you know, investing in food for yourself is bread yes you know steering clear of the you know highly processed manufactured white bread mm. and leaning towards like choosing an um artesian yeah. um, style bread with you know whole grains yeah. and seeds and mm -hmm. i mean it'll again let you explain the difference between yeah. the two and um my most my, my preferred bread is either buying artisan prepared sourdough which is where the bread's actually fermented and that is actually very nutritious and good for our guts mm -hmm. or sprouted bread which is made from grains and seeds that have been sprouted so we're not able to actually digest uh, the nutrients from grains and seeds unless we prepare them in a certain way so this is really important if you're eating a lot of white bread you can actually the white bread will carry nutrients and minerals out of your body so you need to eat bread that's prepared really well mm -hmm. so in terms of that obviously bread goes off really quickly and the more processed bread is the longer it lasts in the mm. cup. so that's why it's so cheap and lasts so long and but you know buy get buy um that is in bread sliced yeah. and put it in the freezer so that you can extend the life of it exactly mm. and you can toast it and then mm. also you know um you can still so you might have your bread fresh one day but then keep the staler bread for toasting mm. you know and just 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 think about how you use it and how you store it a bit better okay so that's it. That was our eight top um, foods worth actually spending money and um, your body will thank you and you'll feel better about yourself. Um, again, eating healthily is a sign of, you know, of self-respect and love for yourself. So I hope you found this video informative. If you have any additional suggestions that you think food that's worth investing in, please put the comments in the box below. Also, if you have any video requests you'd like us to do around food efficiency, let us know. Um, I love hearing back from you guys and I try and make the videos as quickly as possible. I, my list is growing, so I um, always love hearing from you. But don't forget, you can follow both of us on um, Instagram and I'll put the accounts down below. And please make sure you subscribe. And also, if you think you've got a family friend, a friend or a family member that might benefit from watching this video and, and looking at the way that they, they use money to buy food, please send it to them, you know, copy and paste it into an email so that they, you know, can grow their knowledge around the way that they look at their health from a financial perspective and from a physical perspective. Okay, that's it. Ciao for now and we'll see you next week. Bye.